Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I'm in the garage and this will be an update video for a Sunday in the middle of November 2021. We're reaching a zen light state of tranquility in this garage, despite the fact that it's still full of all the treasures. There is walking space and space to maneuver and in the middle there is only one washing machine. One, not five or any other number, we're down to one washing machine in the garage. And that, as you can see, is an indesit moon. I've started to make a video about this. I've taken the top off and gotten that far, and I've removed from the box this thing here, which is the control module SXY3388, the universal main board for a washing machine with a brushed commutator motor or as it's referred to here, string excitation mode for roller washing machine. It's a little control PCB for a washing machine, and the plan is to bung that in the indesit moon. So over the next week or two, I'll rewire it, destroy it basically as a washing machine, and the plan is to see. I wonder if we'll be able to get it to do a 90 degree wash. I'm not even sure if that little board will do a 90 degree wash, but it might. And if it does, then that's on the cards in the sit moon, you silly sausage. Meanwhile, most of the work has been on solar panels and I'll show you them in a second. While I'm walking past this little Pashley trike, I'll show it to you. There's a video somewhere on its way, not quite made yet, about repairing the hub because the back wheel was all wobbly. Really simple repair. Well, it took a bit of time, but quite a simple repair for a thing that's really expensive. Any Pashley bike is expensive, but the specialized ones, the mobility type, devices. Uh, this is a kid's trike for kids who mightn't have any balance. They're really good bikes, but uh, really expensive. So yeah, there's a video on its way somewhere about that. Somewhere. The big MIG is still in there. As part of progress on the MIG, I needed a plug and I thought I could do a 16 amp plug. And I've got a couple of 16 amp plugs in the shed already. But I thought, I looked at it and I thought, well, I didn't have any 16 amp plugs. <laughs> so I only had a 32 amp single phase plug, which is the really big kind. And I had a socket. So instead of thinking about it, I just bunged another socket into the consumer unit in the garage. And that is that. So let's go outside. You'll notice as well, there's another mystery cable coming through the wall. And that goes next door to an inverter for a solar panel. So let's go out and have a look at these solar panels, because that's what I've been working at. Outside... There is a carport. So the idea was that this area gets the sun from about 12 o'clock on all evening, it gets the sun. But this is where I park my car and that's where my grass is. And this is my garden. It goes from there to here. It's about, I don't know, 10, 15 meters long. I don't want to lose my car parking space. I don't want to lose my lawn. I don't want to put these on the roof, bizarrely, which is a quirk of my own nature. Mostly because I think to get them up on the roof would be a bit of a challenge for an individual. And I built this all myself. And for some reason I didn't ask for help. I just wanted to do it that way, and I did. So it's got steel legs embedded in concrete, wooden legs that I machined up. All the timber was found locally from demolition uh, or just scavenged. Uh, like the legs, they came out of 12 by fours, brand new but they hadn't been used and they were about to go on a skip because that was what was, they were cleaning out a warehouse or something. Put my hand up, got it, and there we went. I made this Y-shaped truss. And that's pretty much taken all the weight down to the legs. It's tied with these guys here. The rest of it in the middle is kind of surplus, but it gives a diagonal brace. There's another diagonal brace up on top and then there's a lattice of three by twos from the roofs of houses that were having loft conversions built. All the roofs around here are about 100 years old. Even the 1920s houses now are 100 years old. And uh, all of the roofing rafters are three by twos sitting on purlins this kind of size here. Purlins, I think, is the right word. So anyways, it's all tied together. Wired in, nine by nine string of solar panels. The wiring is not complete yet. I've got it on Twin and Earth 10 mil which I believe is more than adequate, but I'm not, not sure that Twin and Earth is the right thing to do, and that cable is anyways just tied in temporarily on a stick, so that needs to be ducted, but I have to buy some solar cable. It's another trike that came with the Pashley trike, and it just had a puncture and a bit of a steering issue. 
So today it's completely overcast. You can see the sky there. The sun should be here and <laughs> you look you tell me where it is. It's eleven o'clock. It should be about there. The sun is up there somewhere. Nine panels, two hundred and eighty five watts a panel, I think. And following that cable in here to uh ABB inverter. At the moment it's putting out power out 104 watts. And over the last three or four days it's put out just under a kilowatt a day in this kind of weather yesterday we had a little bit of sun for a few moments and it went up to 1.1 kilowatts so the idea is that the power comes in there through an isolation switch goes into the unit the unit does its magic and puts out 240 volts probably actually 250 or 60 volts because of how these things work to kind of push the electricity out it puts out a higher voltage so you will use your own electricity first and in theory it's exporting to the grid some of the time i put in a inverter uh, meter or not an inverter meter but a feeding in meter on the on, on my side of my electricity meter and over a day it's fed in 0.1 actually just this morning it's fed in 0.1 of a kilowatt so it is feeding in and that electricity is escaping but i'm loath to turn on more things so i've got to get a bit smart about how i deal with all this this machine is quite complex in that it'll give you various feedouts and it can tell you a lot about what's going on if you've got the uh, ability to read it. And so I'd like to figure that out, but equally I might not because it's a whole learning curve. 111 watts hovering around there. Now that's, that's no sun. That's just the solid gray sky. And if it looks bright in the video, and it probably doesn't, it's not bright at all. So to be able to get 100 watts out of it is pretty cool. And I've measured the energy in my house over the past few years on and off. And we typically have a residual of 50 to 100 watts. So during the day, this takes away that residual and completely eclipses it. And then when the fridge goes on, it goes up to two or 300 watts, but that's for a few minutes every hour. So it's just uh, interesting how that's working out. And I'm gonna keep an eye on that. And I've taken a load of footage of this, but I'm gonna see how I string that together into a video of constructing this thing. It might be a load of snippets or it might be a big epic. I don't know yet. The water storage system is the next thing to do now that that's done. So projects are working away. I had a big pile of firewood here. It's all gone. It's stacked over there. So it's about a cubic meter or a meter and a half, maybe of firewood ash really sweet to split and i did that with my son this morning and we took a bit of footage so we might be able to make a video out of that it's really easy to split i got some really good firewood split into cut into blocks and i split it into sticks locally and or i got it locally did it here in my garden but it was really fine stuff to split just really easy now the deck the deck's the other issue what's up here there's an Uzi dishwasher. It works. What do I do with it? I don't know. In there, I think that's a little Beko. I think it works. I don't even know if I've tested it, actually. That's a Beko that I'm not sure if I've tested. Quite a modern one. Maybe it had a no power issue. I can't, or it had no filter in it, I think. I can't remember. So I've got to go through all these and figure out what's here. A stack of laptops my mate gave me, including the Apple one. Haven't even looked at them yet. I just picked up the chargers off them yesterday, so I'm hoping I can charge them up and see what's going on, or just scrap them out, one or the other. The Mila works. It's good. I don't know what to do with it, because I don't need another working washing machine. People suggest selling them. I'm not inclined to sell this stuff. I might sell that as broken, but I don't like selling working things, because people expect them to work, and sometimes they don't, and then... They hassle you about it and it's very rare but i just don't like the experience at all of selling used appliances it's not my game i've done it once or twice years ago and it ain't for me becco eco care oh that's the one that i thought was up there so i wonder what's up there mm, who knows and that's the hot point will it wash soup machine it's still on the go it's been outside for a long time now it might just take a brick this becco i haven't even tested it yet i think so I'd like to test it, but it's getting rustier. It's a bit of a crock. I might just do a few experiment washes with it once I get the uh, Indusit Moon out. To finish up, I guess, in here, in the garden, 
since I was chopping the firewood, is my little Robin. We haven't had one all year. He's gone into the bushes there. He's a bit camera shy. He's right in the center of the shot now. There he is on my compost bin. We haven't had a Robin for a few years and we always had one previously. So it's good that one's come back. But he's been working away on this area since I disturbed it from chopping firewood. He's got a worm in his mouth. He's there in the middle of the patio slab there. The Bosch tumble dryer that I couldn't fix, it's moved down to the cellar. I'm not sure what to do with it. Uh, but generally, of anything I've described today, questions or comments, leave them below. My hand's too big. Thanks for watching. See you later.